The GA Hour with Colin Parkinson is brought to you by Paddy Power, home of the Money Back Special. And when I started running, I suppose I didn't stop. And when I got the chance to go, I said I should go. And so I opened up. We were only the small little fish out there, so we are and uh, we're trying hard to make it through. But it's hard to get the breaks when you're the smaller fish. Because I love this county so much, you know. And it's just, I'm delighted that the lads, the lads did it for the people of Walford today because, like, I, I'm, har- I'm heartbroken. <laughs> along to the GER this is the hurling show we're back back to the hurling snobs so any of you have tuned out for the last four months without any hurling pundits you can start coming back to us now again so Michael's here with me and Cheddar's here as well so let's have missed you I've missed you badly because it has to be pointed out that in the last four months I have been the hurling expert on the panel now now you're both laughing at that yeah so Conan and Connor are football snobs, so I'm the only one that has any idea. I've learned a lot in the last few years from me hurling pundits. So there's been occasions on the football show or the, on the GAR combined show where we hadn't really much of an idea we were talking about. So um, we'd end up, I'd look to the two lads and they'd just look back at me. So one was Niall Deasy's goal against Bally Gunner. So it was a long ball and it went in off his hand and we mm. were trying to we were trying to discuss whether this was a fluke or whether he actually tried <laughs> to ricochet this into the net. Yeah. So that's the first one I'm going to hit you with, just to, just to rewind a little bit. Uh, I thought fluke, to be honest with you. Yeah, like, you know, it's not a... It's not a um, I, I don't think any forwards in the game would ever try and slap a ball in. You'd, pubs, you'd do you that know? with your hurl, would yeah, you? Yeah, you'd flick it with your hurl if the ball's coming in high, will you? But uh, you'd very seldom see a lad trying to come in and hit it with his hand. And actually, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. it's so a football it's flick. Kind yeah, of you like might it. try and claim it, but uh, I don't think it'd be ever done on purpose. Okay, well, I'll throw the other one at you, um, Cheddar. It was Adrian Mullins' goal in the Leinster Club final. It was um, Bally Hill Shamrocks against Bally Bowden. And he did a beautiful piece of skill that we we were told about it, but we didn't realise how unique this was, or how I didn't notice it at the time, where he caught the ball with the wrong hand, the hand that usually you hold at the end of the hurl. Mm. And because I didn't notice in real time, I wonder, does this happen often, or was this a brilliant, uh, unique piece of skill by Mullen? I uh, know, look, it, it is a brilliant, unique piece of skill, but it has happened before. DJ would have often done that. I think Ma- Michael made the point earlier on, look, it's the direction he was running in, and just says the skills, th- the skill this guy has to be able to take the ball, you're changing the position and you're hurry to flick it in. Um, but look, it's not unusual, and certainly DJ would have done it regularly. Um, you know, maybe it came from DJ, from his handball skills and yeah. that, you know, you're, 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 you're used to hand to the ball and, and that. And look, a lot of coaching and training in hand to the ball uh, type skills, there's a lot of work done in that now to change your hands, and all the top coaches now would not allow you just coach your, 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 what you're comfortable with so I'm not surprised to see that I'm not surprised to see him doing it either um, you know he's done it at college's level so along on that as well yeah we might talk about his impact a little bit later in part two um, this weekend lads we have Wexford and Limerick is the big game on TG4 TG Cahar I get killed for saying four all the time by the Gale Goers <laughs> and we have Tipperary Clare on Saturday night on Air Sports so we're right back into the mix great games fantastic games and we're going to talk about that in part two but what everybody's talking about at the moment lads is Central Council approving a decision to raise the ticket prices for both hurling and football now it's a 33% increase lads you're going from 15 to 20 so and then online it was 15 and if you booked online it was 12 and now that's gone up by 25% Mm. that's gone up from 12 to 15 if you book ahead online Inflation is is one percent, uh, ch- cheddar. <laughs> They're gone up thirty three percent and twenty five percent. It's a huge, huge hike. Now, in a weird way, we'll talk about this on the football show as well. I can economically, I can see in the hurling point of view, the game at the very top level, elite level, has never been better. Like under yeah. that, it's not as it's not as good. But they haven't raised those prices. So no. coming off a great year to increase the prices, I can kind of see it a little bit in hur- in hurling, a little bit economically in the football side of things. The game is not going well. Attendances are down. I don't think the right thing to do in that situation is to increase prices. But in the hurling thing, is it <coughs> is it as contentious? Uh, I think look, there's probably a couple of aspects to it. Will you really, um, you know, I think the media latch onto these things. To be honest with you, and I know you are yourself as well. Um, and so I sort of people, pe- I see some uh, media articles putting two and two together and latching onto Parky Keeve and Galway problems and all of these type of things. Um, and I think you know, on a wider issue, I think the GA might do better at communicating. You know, where revenue comes in and where expenditure goes and that because. Um, if you would listen to John Horn, and I have no reason to disbelieve him that, that you know the increase here is going to clubs, and I say a lot of clubs would welcome that. Um, so, uh, Ju- but, just but, but, but I do think, center. but I do think, Willie, that the the increase that the problem I have with it is that 
it's for the league and just think about that for a minute I mean Cork are playing Kilkenny um, in Nolan Park uh, this weekend Leash are playing Galway so if you have a family from either of those two counties making that that journey it's you know it's a, it's a serious hit um you know on, on a league day on a winter day when i might you might struggle to go there anyway and that's even more difficult for the the, the counties in the lower tier because you're not going expecting to win the matches so it might be easy for Cork to go but it's difficult for a leash family to go to call yeah. the sport team c- because you mightn't have your expectations of winning and look uh, uh, um i suppose all of the matches that you remember generally speaking have been sort of sort of underpinned by great crowds and great atmosphere at it um, and you know incre- an increase like that for the league in the middle of winter um, you know might m- decide that a family doesn't go and uh, I, I just think that they should really consider the league I probably don't have a difficulty with the championship and with the All-Ireland that they are spectacles and certainly all the other sports at a comparable level are much much more expensive to go to and I would suggest much less entertainment um, so I, I don't have a difficulty probably with the championships I do think the GA should explain all of these revenue and that a little bit more I know they do because I know some journalists have got their teeth into this and you know didn't find anything um, so I, I'm, I'm, I'm probably a little bit in, in, in the middle ground on this I think they should reconsider it for the league try and build support for games when it's difficult to go to and have good games and that and uh, you know maybe reconsider then for the championship and that yeah maybe I do, t- I do find the clubs thing though like I mean they could increase them by 20 euros and say well we're giving it to the clubs and everyone has to mm. shut up because we all love club level mm. we all love grassroots level I think that's quite cynical to immediately say well why can't it come somewhere else for the clubs instead of uh, throwing the expense onto onto people especially in the hurling lads we saw the Munster League last year revenue was up in the Munster League last year we had way more matches they were brilliantly attended I'm not sure they need to increase the hurling tickets at all yeah well I, I think Chad hit the nail on the head there will you just communication like at grassroots level people will not see where this money goes like they, they won't know where it goes it's too like it's too shady where you, like you, you, you won't see it you know and these are the people who go into games week in week out and like in the statement they released it's like increased grants for uh, club facilities and redevelopment and funding to, to uh, county boards like that is that funding for inter-county players who grassroots people won't will never see you know and that's I think that's the bitter pill to swallow for people that they just won't see it like if money goes to a county board the expenses for inter-county teams now is so great and it's getting bigger and bigger every year and are they willing to pay an extra five euro per game to see that and, they, and they'll never see it in their pockets or their yeah. clubs, you know. It and that's d- the big yeah, question. No, that's ju- there, it's just it's a big risk for them. Yeah, There's no absolutely. point in saying everything else. Now, John Fogarty did point out, well, there would usually be no reason to disbelieve John Horan, but I think he was a little bit disingenuous when he said that they hadn't been increased in the la- since 2011, because John Fogarty on Twitter says it's the first review of ticket prices mm. s- since 2011, but it's absolutely not the first time tickets have been increased since 2011. He pointed out a good few occasions, <laughs> like the Ulster mm. Council went crazy mm. last year on the Ulster Championship matches. There were 35 euros. Mm. So it's not mm. fair to say this is the first time since 2011. I, I know, but again, just to get balanced there, was John speaking about the league rather than the league and the championship? I, I don't, I'm, I'm not yeah. sure. I, I think season, season tickets have gone up since 2011. There was definitely, yeah. he was able to disprove the 2011 um, yes. one anyway. So, okay. so like, I mean, uh, like it, but John Horan is probably right in saying they ha- it's the first review since then. Mm-hmm. You know, so yeah, like yeah. I mean, I, I, I think ju- I think just to, to f- for me to finish on that point, I think Michael is right, and I think if it was a little bit more specific about where the money was going, particularly in the counties, because even you say that it's going to clubs in the counties, but you know, is it really or where is it actually going to? I think if the community at the end of the day, we're all GA people, the, the supporters that go and the people that look after the GA, we're all the one family. So it's so, so it's not a, a them and us we should be looking at. But I think th- that GA could explain it a little bit better. And I think then people wouldn't have a problem. And I think if they were specific that they were raising prices to improve the quality of the games in these counties, whatever that is, I think people would buy into it and would go with it. Yeah, OK, fair enough. Um, like there's no relegation <coughs> for the league this year, lads, before we move on. Like, I mean, I don't know what kind of an impact this has because last year, remember, we discussed in the preview show how much less significance the league will have based on the fact that you take a month off after it and then you come back into another league. And that's mm. how it panned out. Yeah. You know, everybody's looking back and they use the league to almost a dry run for the league, which is the league championship mm. now. Now there's no relegation. So there is still relegation from 1B. So like the Leash and the Offaly and the Carlo will still have to mm. fight for their lives. Yeah. But in the 1A, there's no relegation. So next year, it's going the Hurling League is going to be restructured. So 1A and 1B are going to be more fairly dis- distributed with the quality of teams because we know that 1A is stronger. Yeah. 
And it's just funny that the last two All-Ireland champions has come from 1D because I've always claimed that that's easier to be back there. <laughs> and it was always the case. No, you need the hard games. That's not how it's proved. Mm. So anyways, it, like, I mean, we know Davy loves going for the league and uh, like, will we see a watered down league? Cheddar, will we see Wexford who would have played their f- best 15 last year in all the games f- experimenting? And is that going to, you know, is, is it going to affect the quality or even the interest in the league? No, I don't think it is actually, Willie. Um, I think all managers and all teams will be looking at the league for, for different reasons. There certainly are a number of teams this year that need to perform well in the league for a number of reasons. One of them is just to gain momentum. Um, a couple of others need to refine, I suppose, the spirit in their squad and that and simply cannot start off with a couple of, mo- of other defeats and others need to settle their team and that. Um, so there's different, you know, in regards of whether there was relegation or whether there wasn't, managers were going to adapt the same policy anyway of what they were going to do with their team. Um, so I, I don't think it'll make that much difference. Probably what worries me a little bit more, and particularly as a leash man, and particularly just, I suppose, talking about the Offleys and the Carlos and the West Meads that have this world, is what's going to happen next year. And, you know, is that going to be to the benefit of these counties? Yeah, because they, well, if w- when it's restructured, they have no hope of making quarterfinals mm. then. Like, I mean, Absolutely. that's, you know, that's they've just been hung out to dry where there was a little bit of a carrot for them, yeah. Michael, as in the leash could get into a quarterfinal, which we have done, that suddenly now they won't have a chance next year that's the reality of yeah, it yeah and you have to keep lads interested Uli, and uh, what what you might find this year now with the with no one going down from 1A will be that you might see a new face a new superstar arriving that who wouldn't have got a chance earlier on the league because they can't afford to drop points Yeah. but now mm. they might give lads a chance and, and managers might discover some new talents in the panel that, that they weren't aware of up to now so yeah. that could be one big positive from it and also if it's given lads they might give the rest of you of them that's a big where thing you have lads. to play them if you're going to lose points you they're know. all given out about Fitzgibbon yeah. now this feels like groundhog year because <laughs> I remember this exact conversation last year yeah. and the exact same mistakes lads so even Leash Leash have Ender Rowland they've Ryan Mullaney they have Sean Downey they've Stephen Bergen they've Mark Dowling they've Andrew Mortimer they've Owen Gohan a small county like Leash they're all with IT Carlo mm. I have the, the Brian Cody complaining about it mm. you have Porrick Fanning giving mm. out Maddie about Kenny it and, and Maddie Kenny giving out about the panel, and Porrick <laughs> Fanning is coming from a WIT background mm. so he knows both you have Tom Kingston the UCC manager losing his head about player welfare Eddie Brennan they're all doing it so the league starts uh, this weekend and there's Fitzgibbon Cup tomorrow yeah. night yeah. I think like, I, I mean think that's like, we're, like I mean that's just and this has been repeated after all the com- commotion and the giving out last year Yeah, like it is a tough I- year to, to manage everything especially with colleges wise and, and but like you're gonna, lads are going to play two games this year two games this week will be definitely like some lads are going to have to play like Dublin can't last week with them I think they have 22 players Maddie Kenny said between Fitzgibbon and, and, mm. their, and their team and they have to they want to do well in Moonbee they can't afford to go down like so as you say someone's going to be relegated and won't be you don't want to be in that battle at the end of the year which they were last year exactly so you don't want so they, they haven't really got a choice they have to play these lads and lads are going to have to play two or three games in a week which is a l- yeah. asking a lot from young lads you know and that's where it's where you pick up injuries as well and at a, at a young age and then you have to get the injuries sorted so player we- welfare is an issue with 1A as you say they have that cushion of no one's going to be relegated so they might get they to rest these lads a little bit realistically, more. Realistically, they should rest the players' cheddar. If they're looking at player welfare, there's no relegation. Should they be resting these lads? Like yeah. For Eddie Brennan, for example, now he's in 1B. He can't rest them. No. But he, they've got away in Waterford first, which is a terrible start for Leash. Now, in a, in a weird way, you wouldn't be expected to win them anyway. So maybe it's a good thing that it's not like they're playing Offaly or Carlo where they could beat them and they have, you know, have to play these lads from the Thursday. But he says that in the first two games in the league, is in, in the middle of that, you have three rounds of Fitzgibbon. Christ yeah. Almighty! There's like I mean. Well, first thing, um, Oli, you wouldn't be going down to Galway or Waterford, going down to lose a match. No. That's the first thing I'll say. No, be, but you know, you get to be going down there to rip the match out of them. You're not going to make <laughs> or break your league, though. I would but imagine. I, I take your point. Um, l- look, this is a wider issue. It's not necessarily about the Fitzgibbon Cup. Let's talk about the Fitzgibbon Cup first of all. It's a great competition. Um, it has been great to the w- weaker counties, if we want to call them that. Uh, for a long number of years, Leash had one player on the first 15 of the Fitzgibbon Cup. And I remember one of the years I was involved when we ac- had actually nine on the first 15. And I, re- I regard that as great progress uh, uh, within a county. And th- just think of it for a minute. Like your players are mixing with all-stars, playing with all-stars, working with top-class managers. And uh, look, in my time, that was like DJ with Carlo and it was Nicky with UCD. Um, and, and uh, you know, some serious, serious managers. So I think the players are at their development stage, learn an awful lot about hurling and understand where the standards and all of that are. Um, and I think it's it's really, really good. And I would say that, and I can only just talk about my own time, that the 
um, that the Fitzgibbon managers, all of the ones I was involved with, and ourselves would work out what that is, understand what programs they were on, and try and lessen the workload on players. So it's not as serious an issue, I think, as it's made out to be. I take Michael's point that there's a lot of games being played here at a very, very high level. Um, I do think Fitzgibbon is a very skillful competition. It uh, probably lacks a little bit of the sort of the cut that intercounty hurling would have. But I think it's just simply a wider issue here. How are we going to fit in some of the competitions that we want to hold on to? And we're going to have to get rid of one or two other competitions. How are we going to fit in Fitzgibbon, League, um, Provincial League Championship, and then the All Ireland, and still run a club championship at the same time? Yeah. And there's an awful lot of sort of people have offered their tokens work on it, but I. There's, there's enough intelligent people in the GA to gather a group together to, to look at it. And you need to look at it on a county-by-county county basis. You take least of 16 or teams, Carlo, I think, have three. Running their club competitions is very different than Tipperary, where you actually have four divisions and maybe, I don't know, maybe around 30 senior teams. Um, so somebody needs to start to stand back and look at that. Incidentally, there was one solution that I heard that I think would help out greatly that the National Hurling League, League and the start of the club cha- championship could be run together. But the trick to do with that was that on in each of those weeks that players would train half the time with their clubs and half the time with their county because the problem is training and preparation for games. The, the actual problem isn't the games themselves. You're asking your club players to play with your county up to the Sunday and then without any you know games or challenge games or anything that was your club, stand in then a neighbour and start playing and parking club matches and it doesn't work like that. No. And the o- opposite is also the case. As Michael Ryan found in Tipperary last year, a whole pile of Tipperary championship matches were played in May. He had no time to prepare his team for a championship and, you know, look what happened. So I think if all of the counties were sort of on a reasonably s- uh, level playing pitch throughout the month of March and April, that maybe, the c- and, and I know one county does this, cause, and that's why I know about it, and I just say to myself, isn't that a great idea? And it might solve the problem here, that you can play club championships, train with your club maybe two nights, and train with your county for two nights. And I know an awful lot, was including me as a county manager, would be, would be screaming blue murder about that. You would that want it to yeah, see. No. Beca- <laughs> because I haven't oversighted the players and all of that. But we're going to have to bite a bullet somewhere. Someone is. Otherwise Someone has to take yeah, a correct. hit and, and yeah. roll back. And it's usually inter-county managers that are going to have to go, this is a very professional setup. We don't want to lose them. Well, sorry, you do have to lose w- them. Well, 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 yeah, I think a couple of years ago, um, I, I, I probably would have been the man loading the gun on that. But I'd be probably more comfortable with it now as a county manager because a lot of clubs are have a very sophisticated uh, strength and conditioning model for the year anyway. So what you're doing with your club now is not that terribly far removed from county. And you look at yeah. the cool and the Pierce and all of those. They mm. have management teams equal to any. Are any of the teams in Dublin here, Michael, you yeah, would probably absolutely. agree, have management teams as good as any of the counties. Mm. So y- you were training with your club. It's just important that the conditioning people know where they are in the programmes that, that, that you're in and where the down weeks are and all of those things that, that uh, they talk to one another. I think if that sort of level of honesty was between everybody, I think we'd fix the, sl- the, the fixtures problem. And then that makes it a little bit easier to be able to run the Fitzgibbon Cup in a free, you know, in a free week or whatever the case may be. Yeah, exactly. Right, lads, we'll come back and we'll actually preview the league. So we're going to start with the All-Ireland Champions, Limerick um, I thought it was an interesting one with Limerick Because you know, I, for as long as I can remember in hurling The All-Ireland Champions immediately go in as favourites the following yeah. year Limerick are joint third favourites ne- this year Do you know what I mean? It's yeah. like uh, uh, the bookies don't necessarily believe that they're going to do it again Was it a one-off? I, I don't get it myself They have all the Napierce lads back li- this year They'll ha- they have no distractions. They're a year older. They have the monkey off their back. Mm. They have the confidence. Like, I mean, is it a bit of an insult to Limerick to have them coming in this year a- as a Division 1A team, All-Ireland champions, as third favourites for the All-Ireland? John Coyley must be the happiest man in Ireland at the moment. <laughs> because, like, like, nobody's speaking about them. And, like, everyone sort of, not just the media, everyone I speak to says it's a bit of a flash in the pan. Oh, they're a really good side, but they might do well this year, but not win the All-Ireland. You must be so happy, like... Like they're young, hungry lads, and last year they showed no fear, and that was without winning all or in the point. Now they have, and they have that experience, and they have such a strong panel, Woolly. Like, uh, like such I'm a strong panel. Really fancy them for this the year, league, like, yeah. You know, and they have really good clubs in, like really strong club players, loads of young talent there. Like the, the average age in that team must be so young, like they're they're ridiculously talented, and again, like just without any fear. And John Co- John Coyley strikes me as a man who's going to keep their feet w- firmly grounded, like you know, and 
I just think that really, I, did, I don't know how the third favourites are. Yeah. I don't know how they aren't favourites this in, year. In a weird way, they need a good league cheddar just to not let, because you know, maybe like what Michael said, there are people out there who go, oh, well, Limerick won't win it again. Like if they start the, the league badly, that could seep into the squad. I think Kylie needs to hit this league and go, listen, we are a force. Let's, you know, let's change that, that attitude. Uh, yeah, look, it, it probably is important in that way. And uh, probably, look, you could draw comparisons with Galway last year who sort of slow pedaled for yeah. a little while there before they ramped up in, in pace and that. And and that probably contrasts a little bit with how Brian Cody, um, you know, approaches things over a 10 or 12 year period where he went, you know, just bald headed for everything. Um, but I think the big uh, thing for Limerick is not necessarily that. I think it's more technical than that. I think, and I think um, Paul Kinner will have experience of 2013 with Clare. You know, Limerick certainly won uh, not Ireland last year with with two real massive um, um, pieces in their army that a really really good game plan that opened up space in their forward line with good precision hurling and had really good substitutes to come in on the day with a different way of playing, but that were used to playing one another, and particularly the Interpersonal players that really changed the course of the game. I can guarantee you over the winter, every manager worth his salt will have viewed Limerick's game plans, what sets them up, what makes them different, what creates the space, and all of that. So. I think the critical thing is that that they need to come back with some tweaking of the game plan that they have, and that's you know that's going to be really interesting because the Napierski players that came back didn't really fit into that last year. They came with a different thing. Peter Casey came with a different thing. Mm. William Dunham in the middle of the field, and um, Shane Dowling. Shane definitely, um, you know, is a different type of player than they had that defensive wing forward that they were looking at there. Um, so I, I think to have some work to do, but you know, isn't it brilliant to have you know all of those tools at your disposal to be able to do that? But I do think that Paul Kinnard's experience with Clare in 2013, where he sort of came back with Broadly the same way of playing in 2014, and and was unhinged in that, uh, will serve him in good stead. Um, I I think it's probably reasonable uh, to put Limerick where they are. I know they deserve to be uh, number one, and Michael is right, they've won the All-Ireland. What more do you do to prove yourself? But I think the the level of competition and the level of performance in all the top eight or nine counties is, is such this year and the last couple of years that it's probably not... not it's probably not unusual that Limerick aren't regarded as All Ireland favourites. Yeah, maybe. And like I mean, we all know that the following year after winning an All Ireland, mm. you have to introduce a few new players, or it goes stale, and you have to keep lads on their toes. And I think maybe Galway again fell into that trap where, for All Ireland, you know, the heat of the battle, they ended up with the same team and pretty much the same tactics. Um, mm. You know, Johnny Glynn a little mm. bit different, but they looked a little bit stale come the end of the year. So, like, I mean, what is the blueprint for these teams to come back the next year? How can you rip up something that works? Yeah, look you're, you're not, you're not going to say, oh, they have it figured no. out. You'll wait to see is it figured out. And then a good performance will reinforce, oh, well, this is working. Yeah. And then it could, like Galway last year, you get to the all and finally realize, Jesus, maybe we should have. Like, it's a very, very brave thing to do what Cheddar's saying, you know, and maybe throw another angle on it this year, which I think it is absolutely what they have to do. Yeah, like, like, look, Galway went far off last year, had a, had a great year again. And look, it's just tweaking little things, Will, you know, like they have the personnel, so you don't have to bring mad numbers in. It's just... As you say, as, as Cheddar said, just changing one or two things and maybe how the ball is distributed in or how how like more direct or sometimes play the lines. And if you just, like Limerick will change it up a little bit. They won't play the same game plan because as Cheddar said, everyone's going to look into it. But it doesn't mean you have to go a million miles away from it because yeah. it's a work and it worked last year. You got them in all or in final. Yeah. So just if you tweak little things between here and there, again, they have the panel to come in and, and the subs were huge for Limerick last year. And they do add either a bit of pace or a bit of strength Everywhere mm. that came in, like Ryan in the corner, always like he was phenomenal last year when he came in all the time. Just the speed of him, yeah. you know. And like they have maybe the, the bench will keep the lads exactly, on their toes, I like Dublin. So. Although Jim Gavin, fought, like every year he'll bring in two, two yeah. lads that won the All Ireland the previous year won't be on yeah. it, and you're like, that's. Yeah. But that why do Dublin keep winning? Because nobody's sure of their play. Mm. You know, maybe you have to be that cutthroat. I look through that Limerick team and I say, who would you drop? Yeah. It's hard to pick <laughs> someone that you drop. I, I think really that's <laughs> the real thing, though. You cannot just drop somebody um, for. Or that principle yeah. that, that I want to freshen it up um, because players will smell that straight away that that's what you're doing and then it's meaningless you're, you know your move is mm. meaningless um, you've got to generate that and I, I'm, I'm, I'm actually interested to say Jim Gavin because um, you know a couple of players came off the Dublin panel for that and I'd say Jim was probably happy enough that he didn't have to drop anybody but nonetheless it just reinvigorated the panel to drive on even harder I mean Ryan Cody has done it with Kenny for a number of years without having to make a whole lot of changes mm. but I think at the end of the day if you don't get up to the intensity of the preparation that you did the year before, 
um, you're going to be in a little bit of trouble. And putting in a player or two there won't change that. It's much more fundamental than that in terms of the work that you do in training um, and the way you communicate it to your team and the moves you make. And everything that you do as a manager is really, really important. I, th- I think it's it's inter- Galway's interesting. Galway didn't roll over everybody the year before. They struggled over a lot of teams and just got there by a pint. Last year, they were the other side of that by a pint in a, you know on a number yeah. of occasions. So it's not that they regressed a huge amount. Um, it's they may not have been just at the one hundred percent. It might be still ninety nine percent. Um, but you know there wasn't much in it, and and I probably think that a lot of the counties are the same. I mean, Cork should have beaten Limerick in the All Ireland semi final. Yeah. Um, I- injuries definitely knocked them out. Uh, knocked them out, and they, you know they were cruising that game coming yeah. down, coming down the stretch. Um, so if Cork had won it, what would you be saying about Limerick now? You yeah. know, so you've got to take, I think, in the whole context of the thing. And and uh, but I firmly believe you've got to um, have a real serious competition for places in your team. But that needs to be cohesive. It cannot be just, you know, just proving the pint or something. Yeah, like that. merit based. It yeah. does, correct. Yeah. And, and and I think when you have that and you have good players, you know, you have always a great chance. I thought John Kiley made an interesting comment. He said, I think he was talking about preparing for the league and preparing for the new year. And we know uh, traditionally all Ireland champions that haven't won it in a long time go ape crazy and all that kind of thing and he was making the point even though it is it has to be pointed out that Kyle Hayes went to the pool the morning after winning the All Ireland because yeah. I, I interviewed him out in the City West but John Kiley says the nature of celebrating All Ireland has changed fellas are busy with their clubs as well for months and the club scene is taken so much more seriously now a load of lads are back to work back to college they have a lot of demanding stuff going on for themselves I suppose it's not the same as what it used to be but we still had a couple of great nights out and I thought that was interesting in that the idea of going ape for two weeks is probably you know it's probably gone and like they're all so serious now and they take recovery seriously and they're back into a very very serious club scene college university maybe that idea that you go mad is that gone I think it's a bit sad if it's gone Did altogether I would have meant ape for two weeks <laughs> <laughs> no uh, look it's a thing you're chasing for so long I, I know like when you spoke to Kenny lads after like they were mental after all their wins you know and like uh, lads work so hard and so mentally and physically trained, and uh, like I think they have every right to go bananas for a week or two after because it takes so much of their life after. Maybe it's not a week or two after it. Even that's one <coughs> thing. But then maybe up until the Christmas, so yeah. maybe you'd all meet up and you'd have, y- you know, you'd be out mm. a lot leading yeah. up into Christmas, and you get out of shape. That's definitely gone. No, yeah, it is because the young lads as well, as you say, with the club and colleges, and they have so much to keep them going. I don't think there's any fear of them getting out of shape. So lads, suppose. The older statesmen I, I, who maybe aren't with uh, clubs, I, or <laughs> I don't think it's, I don't think it's the actual um, physiology. I think it's more the psychology of it mm. more than anything else. You just lose your hungry edge and all of that, and you're you're sort of sated. And of course, when you go to these sort of events, you know your back's nearly broken with the claps in the back and so on, so on. And you sort of believe that little bit after a while. I thought what was very interesting about John Kiley was actually what was between the lines, because uh, uh, what I'm reading here is John Can- Kiley is managing lifestyles of players. And I, I think that's where, you know, management has gone to such a detail now that, that it's just managing absolutely everything. You leave nothing to chance. And John is not leaving anything to chance that, you know, players are going to get soft underbellies for Limerick next year. He's going to have them ready. And, you know, I would imagine that that's pre-planned. Yeah, no, mm. maybe it is. Tipperary Lads is an interesting one. Liam Sheedy's back. Um, he made headlines last week not allowing um, his goalkeeper um, Hogan to yeah. talk about Tipperary. I'm completely in a di- disagreement with that. Um, but like, I mean, he made one statement here. So he's back in anyways. And we know how brilliant he was with Tipperary the last time. Here's a question for you about that. Liam Sheedy, the game Liam Sheedy left, where it was Tip versus Kilkenny in a traditional style game. And they were some of the best games we've, we've yeah. ever seen in 10 and 11. Does Liam Sheedy need to completely? Does he he need to be a different manager now um, than he was back then? And does he need need a new style for Tipperary than he did th- than he had back then? No, I don't think so. Um, I think Liam Sheedy was a great manager five or six years ago, um, and that's not just a general statement. He obviously managed an awful lot of things really, really well to get the success he did. Um, so, so I think there's two aspects to that. Um, how you manage Tipperary, and that's a very, very difficult job. There, there are a county that expects high performance every day of the week. They're a very big county with an awful lot of quality players. Um, so even managing just player expectation in the panel of that is a very, very difficult job in Tip. I go back to your other point, uh, Bully. Um, I don't think it's comparing um, styles of play in 2010 or 2011 with styles of play now. 
uh, and, and you don't you're, you're not trying to get a style of play to, to suit whatever it is the fashion at the minute you're trying to get a style of play that suits the qualities that are within your own team drive that as far as you can and try and hammer the other team with that style of play and, and just just gain the momentum that way and I think Liam yeah, of course you're going to keep an eye on other and you're going to keep an eye on Limerick and what they're doing and all of that as we spoke earlier on but your most of your time is going to be spent is how can I settle my team to play in a certain way that's going to give me the best advantage and the best benefit of, of trying to win an All-Ireland here and I'd, I'd guess that that's what Liam will be looking at I th- Here's another qu- a question and we talked about this in the context of James Horan coming back to Mayo um, mm. on last week's show so James Co- Horan came in after John O'Mahony yeah. right one of the more old old school managers and he had a huge impact because he l- raised the levels of professionalism he completely transformed Mayo football yeah. Liam Sheedy came in after Babs if I'm not mistaken so he mm. brought in a brilliantly professional mm. uh, setup. the players responded this is fantastic strength and condition and all these kind of things now Liam Sheedy's coming into a squad that has all that kind of yeah. thing do you know what I mean? Yeah, so can yeah. he make that same hit of the players going, "Whoa, this is the best setup we've ever had"? Whereas now they're going, "Well, like I mean, sure, this is run, this is par yeah. for the course." Like yeah. a, you know, can he have that same impact? I, d- I I think he can definitely. Like he's a fantastic manager. I slightly disagree with Cheddar. I think the game's evolved an awful lot since 2011, and Tip's major problem for the last two or three years is they just the distribution from the back line to the forward line. They have just given 80 yard, 90 yard balls in high and expecting their forwards to win it. Backs have got an awful lot cuter these days and they know they don't have to win primary possession. They just have to break it down for each other and stop the play. And that's where Tip have been struggling for me over the last few years. I think he's going to have to come in, have, make it, scramble that back line around a bit and have like the likes of Party Mar and all, winning the ball, but then looking up and giving low fastball into that forward line and working the lines an awful lot more. Because the, the panel on Tip is phenomenal. Like the talent there is phenomenal. Well, they still have the best forward line on paper, I think, outside yeah. of Cork in the country. Some yeah. of the talent is unreal. You, the use of the ball is ridiculous. Like, and you see the names, Shamey Callanan and Noel McGrath as captain and vice captain this week. And like, to have them two leaders in your forward line. John like, McGrath. Sure yeah, yeah, anybody would, would, yeah. Be, would love it. Like, so I think he's definitely going to up the performance levels. But if he gets a team playing more like a team this year and not like 15 individuals out there, I think Tip are, are going to have a huge say this year. Like yeah. you know, we really I think that's the f- that's the cr- cr- I do agree with Michael. Um, I suppose that's what I was referring to earlier on. That that like look, that he's going to have to happen. That he's going to have to play the way, and he will. He'll play the way mm. that's going to get the best out of his team. And I do agree with Michael that the distribution of ball and and their movement off the ball and all that needs to be better. But I think the first thing he's got to do is um, reinvigorate the panel. Um, the he's under twenty one All Ireland winning team to come into that. Now they were mm. they weren't fancied, but. They yes. still have yeah. a few yeah. lads from that. And I can tell you, I know a, l- a fair bit about Tipperary Club Hurling. I can guarantee you there's a huge amount of quality players in Tipperary that could step into an intercounty team. But sometimes that's difficult when you have too many. Um, and like, are they good enough in the positions that he needs to fill? And he definitely needs to figure out three and six. And he probably definitely needs to figure out um, a competitive midfield that's going to win a lot of possession around the middle third. He certainly has enough talent up front to do that. But I think just... Just prior to that, he's going to have to figure out how he's going to get more team cohesion into that panel because uh, just the morale seemed to have just been a little bit yeah. dissipated over the last couple yeah, of years. Yeah, it did seem that. Gerard Brown is the under-21 uh, midfielder who seems to have an awful lot of fire in his belly. Like he, may, They need maybe some lad to come in and just give them that spark back. Now, I know Liam Sheedy will help them with yeah. that spark. He said he thinks that um, the energy and attitude that the players bring, if they can create that. So he's talking about yeah. energy, attitude. Again... I see. I I disagree that the players didn't have energy and attitude no. last year. I think they've gone maybe a bit. Maybe it's the staleness that he's talking about. But another thing on using the league, he said. He he said twelve or thirteen of the starting positions and where they'll be playing have to be nailed down by the end of the league. Said uh, Sheedy. And I know Michael Ryan last year experimented an awful lot. He ended up rewarding the lads that were experimented with, and there was four debutants against Limerick, and they yeah. got caught. Yeah. Do you know? Mm-hmm. So I don't know. Like I mean, I think Liam Sheedy has a, v- a much more difficult job than maybe he 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 might have thought well then he back I it's a great job and yeah. it's a terrible job <laughs> absolutely <laughs> it's a weird like, one. like Kenny was the big one back then I suppose when he, once he got over that hurdle he had a great chance to win the all but now like when you look at that league like it's so hard to pick a winning team from it and that's just yeah. one A league so you, you really have realistically seven or eight teams who could win the all Ireland this year and like it's a it's a bigger lot bigger challenge I think for me than it was 2011 yeah so yeah, he tried I, he tr- oh, sorry, I think one other thing Willie I think um, the, the local championships in TIFF take place right before the Munster Championship and I did last year and there's probably three serious competitions in TIP and bear in mind there's four divisions in TIP 
Um, so you have club hurling going on right through May and you're expected then to just put boot to the floor with a new game plan, new players, new way of playing and all of that within one week or two yeah. weeks. And that, is that, you, that cannot be done. Um, it's fine if you're an old team if they're winning an All Ireland or three or four All Irelands and you can go back and you can just turn on the turn on the tap again, but you can't do that with a new team. So I, I suspect he'll be doing a lot of work in the background with county boards and other people as well. Maybe just for year one and going to the clubs and say, look, I need a little bit of breathing space here to build what I want to build here, and we'll get back then to playing club championships again next year. I suspect he'll be he'll be trying to figure out something along those lines. I, th- I think he has to, and I do mm-hmm. take your point. The whole April they got too much in, and Mike then the, the Munster League starts the first week of yeah. May, mm-hmm. and then then you have a county like Leash, John Sugru, who went away down to Kerry for a training weekend two weeks before the championship. But it was it because he has to get some work yeah. done. And loads yeah. of counties doing this. This is banned in April. Yeah. Like, I mean, Cheddar, I'd say you'd be pulling your hair out <laughs> as an inter-county manager. You lose all your players for April outside of training, maybe twice a week because there's matches at the weekend for them. So you get no quality work. It's only Tuesday, Thursday after, after work, which is often physical sessions because you might not have lights. Then you're out in the championship early May and you've done nothing worthwhile and they won't they ban you for a home game mm. if you go away for a weekend to try and get some mm. done. Mm. Like that it really is bizarre, isn't it? Yeah, uh, some of those things are, are a little bit bizarre and you just wonder do the people that make the decisions understand what where, you know, preparation preparation of county teams are. And look, just one little point, you know, puck out strategy in a team will vary from the game you're playing from team to team. Um, so you can get all of that right for a fortnight's time or a week's time but it's going to be very very different for the following week because they might have a different way of defending or you might have a different way of winning possession or something like that um, so when are you going to get it done um, you know you're going to have 30 or 40 puck outs from your goal you cannot just say ah, it'll be alright on the yeah. day and we'll just make it up as we go along yeah. because if you were to do that you're going to get battered as well Looks as a manager yeah. that you weren't yeah. properly prepared for it you know so, so you know, it's time, time for people to make these th- type of decisions to listen to a few people first before they jump on these type of bandwagons. Yeah, I think the whole thing has been looked at at the end of this year, maybe, and then we might see the whole season restructured um, the following year. We'll talk about Kilkenny here, lads, because the big thing jumping out at me from reading around about Kilkenny is they finally look like they might have somebody that will play full back and release um, Porrick Walsh out to wing back, which everybody agrees even Tommy was talking recently wing back is his best position yeah. we all know yeah, he's, he's better yeah. at wing back but he's also a very good full back yeah. but there's a fella called Hugh Lawler um, his funny uh, spelling of the name is H-E-W so <laughs> I'm completely I have my eye on this fella now yeah. so he <laughs> plays for O'Loughlin Gales and he's actually versatile enough but he played a lot with O'Loughlin Gales at full back he's 6 foot 1 or 2 according to JJ Delaney he, JJ says he's very impressive in the few games I see him, him at full back as well very quick very direct and again, when you're playing full back at the moment, you'd be out close to the sidelines. Look at the likes of Seamus Flanagan. You have to follow him everywhere. Mm-hmm. You'd have to have the legs as well. He's a guy that does have the legs and he's a big, big guy too. So, like, I mean, you look at Kilkenny last year. You were talking about they needed a cornerback, they needed a full yeah. back, and they needed a centre back. You've Paddy Deegan who's nailed down the yeah, cornerback. He's been brilliant. If Hugh, Hugh Lawler, or Hugh, Hugh Lawler, I'm not sure is it who or Hugh. I presume <laughs> it's Hugh. Um, he's going full back. Then you've Porrick Walsh, Killian Buckley, who's an excellent centre back. Suddenly, Kilkenny have a nice little bit of shape if they if they do that and we know he's going to hit the league hard oh, absolutely Co- he always does and and to Kenny were, were good last year like they were much better than I expected last year Woolly uh, and with the Cody factor again he's just going to drive them on and the belief is going to be within that Kenny squad that they can win the All-Ireland they're, they're not playing any other game yeah. than the All-Ireland so like if you can get Park Walsh out like if you have a half back line with Park Walsh and Killian Buckley in it there's not going to be many better half back lines in Ireland so they have a great st- stability there in the back line to, to work from and again with TJ and all up front, they just I, I think they have to find one or two more forwards. Like if Ho- Richie gets back, Richie Hogan back fit and flying again, he'd be a u- huge asset for Kilkenny. Because yeah. last year he was just a bit stop start all year and couldn't well, couldn't find his mojo a bit, you know. So well Adrian Mullen has been hugely highly regarded with St. Kieran's. Like the more mm. I hear about him, he's he's and he's uh, scored two one in the Leinster Club hurling final. He's a decent sized fella, a scoring mm. wing forward. Um, I think he repeated a year in Kieran's and ran him up the following year when he repeated or something like that. So, like, I mean, this lad is somebody who could come up and make a mark. Obviously, they won't have him during the league uh, cheddar because he'll mm. be with uh, Bally Hale. Mm. That's not just Adrian, actually. There's a, there's a real plethora of that quality player at Kilkenny at the minute. Um, and, look, they have a fair forward line to try and fight their way into. Mm. If you look at last year, and, uh, you know, I did see the re- the, the, some of the replays of the games last year just over the Christmas there. And, look, Kilkenny had Limerick beaten. 
um, and probably un un untypical of them, missed a lot of scores. But just look at who they're, who they're missing. Um, Paul Murphy and Colin Fenley came back into the championship plate, and it's, it's difficult to ramp up to that level of pace again. They're going to be available to them this year. Walter Welsh was injured last year, a primary possession winner for them. Uh, Richie Hogan looks as if he's cleared up his back yeah. injury and is you know is likely to have a good year. You're talking about three All Stars and two Players of the Year, I think they are. Um, and throw in that volume of of quality players that are in Kilkenny. There's a huge volume of real quality players that have won a pile of uh, colleges all Ireland with Kieran's and so on and with Kilkenny CBS. Um, so I I think that that you know they're Kilkenny definitely are on the march again. And uh, I would think that you know I'll certainly put them. Uh, serious contenders just to win an All Ireland this year, Willie. Mm. They weren't that far away yeah. last year, and I was surprised by that. By that, I have them in there too. Is no, right. Definitely. You've young Lahey there that was great in he midfield. He's, great, he's yeah. a year older now, and you know he's yeah. a real brilliant. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Heard he eventually settled on a position probably yeah. last year. So like I mean, I think the, the the one thing I would say yeah. I, I, though about him is that. Um, a lot of the players that they have in the forward line, even if you look at like John Donnelly and a lot of those players, are very, very good stick men, but just aren't that aggressive ball winners that Kilkenny typically like um, in terms of winning primary possession and that. They're really, really good stick men in possession. Um, but if you look at the Kilkenny team of old, the first thing that they were really strong was at was winning aggressive primary possession and getting the ball in the hand and then be create, being creative with it. They just don't seem to have got to that edge yet. Um, but having said that, they only need to find another player like the John Power or something like that to make things happen in the forward line, and then all of those players will click for you. So they're, I think they're very, very close to you know to maybe having another team here that's going to be very hard to dislodge over a number of years. Mm. You can laugh at this one all you want just before we move off Kilkenny, but Brian Cody um, hasn't won an All Ireland since when was it? 2014, 15. So like it's only four years. Four it's not years, much. Yeah. But Brian Cody has that job for as long as he wants. He's a legend, whatever. But Brian Cody never, ever had anyone Kilkenny that could potentially put pressure on him. Now we have King Henry, <laughs> who's now into the mix. Honestly, but maybe does Brian Cody need that? Because like, I know I disagree with that, Willie. Um, DJ has been manager of yeah, of, of um, Carlo IT or well, IT true, Carlo, yeah. the proper name, and brought him to a Fitzgibbon Cup final for the first time ever for a college of that size. Yeah. Um, but is he talked about in that? Ah, uh, yes. Ah, uh, no. Yes, he would. Um, the reason he's not talked about, I suppose, as much is because Brian has been so successful. True. You know, this is no different than Alex Ferguson or who you know, whatever other manager you like to look at that's been hugely successful over a number of years. Um, you know, Mickey Hart's the same. You know, are there any people in in Tyrone that are capable of, of taking over Tyrone? Of course there are. But you know, the guy has been so successful. Why would you change something? Which is uh, we, could, we don't want to get into the conversation. If Cody steps down, who gets it? Henry or DJ? Yeah. <laughs> 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 Jeez, that's another very yeah, you, could no. you could do a full show on the, right, on, yeah. on the likes well, of that. That, that will be an interesting one. There's a good few of them now. No, you see, Heresy, Eddie Brennan, yeah. they might as well forget about yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. I'd say they're sick when they see Sheffield and take it over. You're going to you're gonna have to tap into JJ now for that one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> JJ's making too much money out of Sky. He doesn't <laughs> want to know about, uh, about management. Oh, he's doing a bit now. He's doing a bit now. <laughs> So he'll be back next Thursday, JJ, <laughs> for anyone who uh, he's back in with us again this year. So um, Waterford, quickly, lads. So they haven't played in six months. Mm. So I'd say Waterford are a team, like Tipperary in the same boat, six months. Like uh, that's a, just a product of the new championship in that they're out. They were out in June. Yeah. These lads are chomping at the bit with a new manager. Um, apparently, Pori Fanning, he says... This is how he described the style um, that Waterford would have. Because obviously when everyone talks about Waterford, they think of style. Like these are a te team that got to the all Ireland final last year and almost forgotten about now. He says, hopefully we're a hard-working team. I'm not going to go into it too much about how we're going to play. We may use a sweeper at times, we may not. You have to play what's in front of you. As you saw with Claire last year, the ditch back to the sweeper or the switch back to a sweeper at one stage. And I think... Well, just reading from that is that Waterford are going to be flexible but they might go away from the full time sweeper for a while and I think in the McGrath Cup even though you can't read much into it they set up pretty pretty orthodox and even the Brick Walsh was thrown in a full yeah. forward lads this is a new Brian Corker and that's where, that's where <laughs> I'll be playing Brick this year <laughs> yeah it's got, it's, I, I'm really looking forward to seeing Waterford in, in, in 1B in the league just to see what style of play they're going to bring he's going to have a chance there in 1B to try out a few things and yeah. it's still going to be very competitive Like he's going to have some really good games there to, to work out but it, it, it's very tough coming in after Derek McGrath he was a loved manager it's going to be very interesting to see how the players respond to that Like the hunger is definitely going to be there after being as you say six months out and that's it they're going to be so eager to, to play and 
they had up, so up and down last year and you need that bit of consistency this year and, and Fanning could get that out of them you know it's going to be very I'm really looking forward to seeing Warford this year and seeing how they go yeah and they were decimated by injuries in the championship yeah. and they still I think that they almost draw with Cork in the last mm. game and they've Kieran and Shane Bennett back which yeah. they didn't have last year mm. Stephen Bennett's racking up huge scores mm. in the McGrath Cup now he's take, he's on the freeze mm. um, you know and, and the brick is back so like I mean this is one year, Cheddar, genuinely. I know the hurling pundits are all very positive. It's very hard to pick an All-Ireland winner oh, out of definitely. maybe si- six <laughs> six no. incredibly strong teams and three other strong teams. Would that be fair? Yeah, no, that's Six or seven, even. Yeah, I think that's fair, right? Not, not dissimilar to last year. Look, I'm a little bit surprised about people writing off Waterford. Um, look, they've got quality players. And when you've got quality panel and quality players, you know, regardless if you did nothing, you have, you have a fair chance of doing something. Um, I know Parig well, and um, you know Parig and his family have been steeped in Waterford hurling and have been for a long number of years. And you know they're going to bring that passion. He's going to bring that passion to Waterford. And I thought it was interesting. You can always judge these things, particularly by the senior people in panels. And if Brick Wells thinks it's worth his while to stay on yeah. for another year, he's not staying on. And if he doesn't think that there's a chance of winning something or going for something here, and and, and uh, I thought that was a big statement. And you know, regardless of where he plays in, at this stage of the year, doesn't make much difference. The fact that he fully committed to Waterford and that the others are back suggests that there's a cohesion in the camp and that they want to go away and do something. Um, and I think Parig will bring that to them and he'll certainly bring a Waterford passion to them, no, as Derek did, but maybe a little bit different. Um, and I think knowing Parig that, you know, you will see a fluid, more fluid way of playing maybe. It, it, you know, you, you will definitely see tactical hurling. Um, it may not be just rigid sweeper that you will see. But look, if you're playing Clare tomorrow and Clare playing with a sweeper, you're going to end up with a sweeper. Mm. So, you know, you need to know how to play it. Well, that's it. I think two critical things for Waterford. Um, I think Parig may change the style of management. And, uh, you know, we spoke about this last year, Woolley. We spoke about towards the end of the year. This is a crucial appointment for Waterford and, and how they approach this. Because, you know, the, wa- the Waterford team under Derek, Derek had him for a long time. And I suppose it was individual motivation of players, um, you know, you would probably call it th- that style. Um, because he knew them all and he knew what buttons to press. Now, does that panel now need to move on to real performance monitoring and management? Um, you know, do your job. Here's the aspects of the job you need to do. To go away and do your job. And, you know, you need to eyeball players in that and, and, and so on and so on. And will Parry be able to bring the panel with him into that sort of, I suppose, a different style of management? The other thing is that he, he he's in Munby, which is great to get that start, but he's playing a lot of matches away from home, including in the Montreal Championship. And look, that can you can turn that in your favour and you can sort of... Uh, you know, cement the water for probably behind you, as in, look, everybody's against us here. You know, let's 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 uh, take this on and 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 that and um, you know, so he can galvanize Waterford. You need to do a little bit of work on it, but you can uh, galvanize Waterford and under that type of supporter. That you know, if they feel there's a slight on them, they will get behind their team. He has quality, um, and he has a team that's used to playing to tactical hurling. Um, so I think there's a lot of advantages. I'm just surprised that people seem to be writing them up. So yeah, yeah, they seem to be well down the list right we'll come back and we'll do some predictions for this weekend all right paddy power predictions lads so we'll start here in division 1a this is on saturday night this is the televised game on air sport tipperary claire tipperary are four to six favors against claire six to four um outsiders we've talked about tipperary we need to talk about Clare, who got so close to the All Ireland final last year. Shane O'Donnell, unfortunately, who played so well, he he's going to be gone this year. At l- he might be back for the championship. He's away in college in America. There's a fella, uh, Dermot Ryan, who's flying it so far mm-hmm. this year, lads. I don't know much about him. Colin Gilfoyle, a big fella, at full forward. You have Niall Deasy, who is so um, good in the Munster championship. He has to get a start here, mm-hmm. lads, this year. So they have options now, and I thought maybe with Clare last year. They didn't have that bench that would strike fear into teams necessarily. They might have one or two, but they seem to have uh, strength and depth. And you have Donald Maloney and Jerry O'Connor, Cheddar, whose two years were up and said they only wanted two years, yeah. and now they're back. So Clare strike me as a team that might be on a mission this year. I'd say the management says, as we'll give it one more year, you got so close, and let's bloody do it. Yeah, look, I think they were quite close last year. Um, they probably do need. You know, they certainly got some things really, really right. I mean, John Conlon going to full forward, you know, was mm. was was a serious, serious play, and you know, he's a serious, serious player. And they have serious players. I mean, they're all Ireland champions in 2013, league champions in 2016. Um, so they they know what this is about, and they've got some some serious hurlers in the likes of Tony Kelly and some of those. Mm. Um, 
but I, I I just think you know sometimes teams just plateau and they reach their performance level and they don't. I don't know they don't seem to have that edge to really get over the line and as we all know the last couple of inches over the line are the hardest to get there and, and uh, so I, I just thought that the, the, the Der- Jerry and Donald spent a lot of time last year um, changing some things around even the way they managed the team and that um, and you know whether they can get that extra bit out of the team now to get over the line or not time will tell but I, I, I just think that they might just plateau in terms of performance and that uh, they're, they're very very serious contenders obviously but they're coming into Semple Stadium against Clare and or against Tipperary should I say and look Tip have a point to prove here and and look I, I, they, they seriously disappointed Tipperary supporters in the league final last year whatever about being beaten by Kilkenny in Nolan Park but not turning up for the fight is seriously a serious slight on all Tipperary people and I think uh, all Tipperary players have got to really look at themselves in the mirror and not let that happen again and their first chance to actually do something about that is going to be Saturday night I know Claire beat him there last year for the first time and maybe ever in, in Semple Stadium but certainly for a long time but I, I'll be surprised if Tipperary don't just by sheer force of will go get the win uh, on Saturday night in Turles I, ha- I was reading a the thing there during the week and I thought it was very, very interesting. I hadn't thought about it. And it was Tipperary versus Kilkenny last year in Semple Stadium. Do you remember Kilkenny had lost the first two games and they were under a lot of pressure and it looked like yeah. Kilkenny were on the slide. Yeah. Tip had an experimental team. That game was in the mental pot. They had all their experienced lads on the bench. Yeah. They could have put the foot on Kilkenny's throat and choked them. They didn't bring on any of the experienced lads and they lost the game. They gave Kilkenny the, the boost they needed and, they and then they end up then. Le- beating them in the league final. <laughs> like, isn't that a huge mistake Absolutely. from a tip point of view? Yeah, the t- I suppose the tip supporters said over that <laughs> to have this be their bonnet with Kilkenny. Like, Kilkenny seemed to have the edge over them over the last decade or so. Just, I don't know if it's sheer willpower or Cody's thing, but Kilkenny just have that belief and you'd be sure if Tip had lost their first few games and they were going to play Kilkenny, Kilkenny would have had their strongest team out and stood on their neck, you know. And yeah. that, that's the difference there, because that changed Kilkenny's season last year, you know. Big time. <laughs> Absolutely, but with the Clare and Tip game, I, I fancy Clare. I just have this feeling that like this is it for this Clare team. Like it, they've a really great panel, and if they want to get the best out of the players that are all there, I think this is the year they want to win the All Ireland. Like I think so too. Like, between Donald Maloney and Jerry, Jerry O'Connor, there like they've experimented for two years now. This is the year for stability. Find that your best team and play them all the time. They know what system they want to play with. The likes of DC Connell and Duggan, they're, they're huge men. Like to have around your forward line. Sprinkled with like uh, the Honey Kelly giving ball in, and I just think and Podge there yeah, between Reedy the lines, is very good yeah, too. and Reedy like you have that right balance there, and, and Aaron Shanahan's back this year who missed all of last year again. except for coming on against Galway and got that great goal. They've loads of talent, loads, and uh, like they have plateaued, I should have said, but I think that was the, a two-year thing of, of the two lads trying to find it. Conor McGrath, who's <laughs> gone off the boil, like yeah, I completely mean. off the boil, like and I'd be trying to get my hardest to get Shane Donnellan back as well if I could for championship because he's just a phenomenal talent I'd be sending Conor McGrath to a sports psychologist the best in the world and say yeah. get this lad's head back to where it was such a confidence player like if he if he has a good game say against Tip this weekend if he is playing like that mm. sets him up for the year you know he's such a confidence player and I've played against him the speed of him the control of his ball it's just his head is just it's not in it for yeah. the last year or two and again if you get these players right I just have a feeling that Clare are going to have a huge say this year and I, I'm going to go for Clare definitely yeah I, I, geez, I find it a hard one so Cheddar is going for Tip you're going for Clare mm. is that right I'll, yeah. go for, I'll go for Clare as well um, Dublin and Carlo is on Saturday night as well Dublin are one to 33 favourites for this Carlo 10 to 1 who had a brilliant year last year mm. um, they did everything they could have done Carlo last year ended up losing to Limerick at home talks to us about Maddie Kenny um, Michael because he's in he from from the quotes I was reading says it's our aim to have everyone available when we get into January the Bowden boys and everyone that is what we w- said when we met we wanted to start the year with a healthy squad you can have all the great players and all the talent in the world but unless you're able to get them on the field it's no good to you that's our starting point trying to get everyone on the pitch yeah. and is that probably uh, probably the a fair comment from him Abs- absolutely like like Gilroy did great work last year he had a really young panel and had them playing in a way he wanted them to play. Maddie Kenny's going to play a different way, but he ha- he got the players there. You know, Kula style is different to Gilroy style last a- year. Absolutely, right? Kula style is very fit and fast. But what what Gilroy did was he got a great panel there of young lads and gave them one year's experience of of top class management and and playing against the likes of Kilkenny and the top teams and it stood to them. Like I went to watch them against Galway in the World Cup semi final and. They're, they're, they're looking up more they're trying to play you can see the cool imprint on them already and it's really? so early in the season they're, they're looking for the man off the shoulder all the time and playing the lines and 
they're they're not hitting brainless balls up 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 the pitch just for the sake of it, you know. And like Rushy is there as a target man and he's hurling well, but I think he'll be there as if lads are really under pressure and giving the ball in. He's an option yeah. there. You can do both. Uh, 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 abs- absolutely, but like the like Darrow Connell's a huge one. Like, he's been phenomenal for Kula and he's he, like from playing them over he the years. Midfielder is he? No, midfielder. midfielder. And, and where Dublin struggled is midfield. And Mark Shoot is back too. Mark's a, a, back and I've seen him there that day and he's huge like just the, the, the physique on him from when I last seen him he's, he's absolutely a monster like you know some from Dublin has stood to him like would have been with the footballers yeah um, he's going to be huge when he comes in now I think he's he's. I don't think he's back yet but Dara's Dara's Dara yeah. Dara back because he came on at the end of the Galway mm-hmm. game and like Dublin have struggled to find that midfield partnership and I think if you maybe have him and Jake Malone two cooler lads they know how to interlink the play there, and if, if that's what Maddie Kenny wants, I think that's going to be a huge say within the panel. You right. Know, so so, that, so D- Dublin defenders will be looking up. They'll be looking for these two lads, and yeah. then they'll be moving. It, they'll yeah. be moving it through, through the, the lines. Yeah. Now, what, where they struggle, well, he is free taker was you know so midfielder and free taker. So you're going to have either Paul Ryan or David Tracy. They're, they're both being injured, so I'm not sure if they're going to be back this weekend because they missed a few crucial frees against Galway. And if you had to score them, they would have beaten them that day. You know so. Right, free taker wise and midfield is where they're going to really have to improve on this year right and it looks like they have no, the they have absolutely, yeah, absolutely what do you think he's a good match for Dublin I think he is Cheddar oh no there's no doubt about that um, um, I think ser- Dublin are serious have serious potential here Willie yeah. um, and Matty has a serious panel at his disposal here mm. of the type of players that he wants to play the type of hurling that he wants um, but therein lies a little bit of an issue because that, that will be different than the game that they played very different to the game yeah. they played last year and you know some of the player players that played last year may not fit into that and you know Matty will be ruthless he has to be in, in looking at that but he's an awful lot of players that we really haven't seen yet that, that Michael will know well yeah. here um, and there's a young Sullivan there from Bridget's yeah, um, well, yeah. um, there's Donald Burke there's a younger Crummy I was very impressed with Ronan and Hayes there last year he's just still coming along there's a lot of these players that are very 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 good stick men I'd probably say that they just still need that one or two forwards Michael mm. that are very very efficient with the ball in the hand and that can score in, in, in very tight spaces mm. and that. Is Shute that? Or is Shute just a direct runner? Is he the... He runner. He's more he, of a he runner. Wouldn't if, if, if Mark comes out with a ball on the wing or anything he wouldn't be the most accurate. He he's wouldn't not be all over his shoulder. shoulder. He right. wouldn't because okay. his, his, his score and the shooting average would be poor like you know okay. percentage. He's not, he's not that type of player. What he is is a bull like if he yeah, gets yeah. it and turns you his pace and strength and seeing the size of him now if he still has that pace in him he'd be a nightmare to mark when he turns you know okay. I had a few years in there a full back I'll give a bit of, I'll <laughs> in training so he's a nightmare I'll give a bit of a health warning though guys here um, I might there's a couple of things for Dublin. Um, they have a lot of players in the Fitzgibbon Cup, which is great. Yeah. I think that's fantastic, Michael. I think it's a, gr- you know, it's a great indication of the, the health of hurling in Dublin. Um, but at the minute, um, if all those players are playing a number of matches yeah. this week, it's just not the ideal way. And the change in the way you play is quite difficult and will take time and may not click um, for, for this weekend. And I'm going to talk up Carlo here. Carlo are the most improved team in the country. They are, yeah. And I say that very, very clearly. And they've a team, they've even improved on that um, under Bonner. I just see a real team with cohesion here at the minute. Um, and th- like last year, they were good, but they didn't have their best forward playing last year. Mark Cavan is the best scoring forward in Carlo. Now, I think there's one or two players that are injured at the minute that would be first teamers that might actually hurt them. But he definitely has brought them up another notch. And I think that the matches in Parnell Park that's going to be difficult for them it is a massive step up to go from where you were up to this level of hurling it's massive people don't really realise it and the quickness of the hurling and the time you have on the ball is very very different than you have when you're you're down in 2A but I think this is going to be a competitive match and I think if Carlo stay in the game early it'll be a competitive match of course I expect Dublin to win it but I don't think it's going to be the walk over that our pals and Paddy Power think it's going to be yeah, yeah. No, I think way. yeah. The, the, the difference here is that Carlo will be playing their first 15 hitting this hard Dublin might be experimenting a little bit so Carlo you know do I think yeah. they absolutely will be competitive but we'd all fancy Dublin to win that the next one then lads on Sunday in Nolan Park is a huge one it's Kilkenny who are 6-5 to five and Cork who are 5-6 to six. so it looks like Cork are slight favourites for that one in Nolan Park which is a strange um, bet that I wouldn't agree with Cork are interesting lads they'll have Adding, Alan Cadigan back this year they have Stephen McDonald, the previous year's captain back a leader mm-hmm. maybe that's what Cork need a couple of leaders like that Aidan Walsh is back who's got loads of experience with the hurlers and the footballers he played midfield and wing back when he was there the last time a really strong runner Tim O'Mahony be a year older mm-hmm. he could solve the centre half back because he yeah. looked like a really good player and when you look at it lads 
there's well at least those three fellas anyway Caddick and Stephen McDonald, Aidan Walsh if they had those three lads against Limerick last year coming in off the bench instead of the lads that they did bring on and had to bring Seamus Harnady who was already injured yeah. back in like realistically lads Cork kind of like they had that game won oh, and then Limerick win it like Cork are no distance away from this like oh I mean God, no like I should have said it was injuries last year against Limerick that killed them their whole half half forward line who were really dominant throughout the game were decimated then you know like Daniel Carney, Luke Mead and Seamus Harney all got, got injured decimated, like, and, and they had no bench no. Other, other than your man's go to Flynn he's yeah, good he yeah. came on mm. But it killed them, Wooly. Like, and, and if that happens to your team, so you know. Sorry, Dara had to come in. Absolutely. He got yeah. injured too, yeah. He'd yeah. been carrying an injury towards yeah. the end of it. And they were still so close, you know, mm. like to win. And so Cork are like a team really to keep an eye on. Again, when we talk about teams to win the All Ireland, they're definitely in the mix. And they've such, I think they have a really good panel this year. And you've, you've named the lads there. Cadigan's the big one for me. He's just, when he's on his day, it's so hard to beat. He might struggle sometimes in the early stages of the league with the bad pitches and that. But once you get to the once you get to the hard ground, he, he's so hard to stop because he, he's is very good in the air as well as as as, as a good stick man. You know, is this fair fair to say then, Cheddar, that you wouldn't fancy Cork as much in the league in the hard ground with the fancy players they have, and you would fancy them more in the championship because they they're, 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 they've backed up their monster win with another one. Like I mean, are they are they a championship sunny day? team no they definitely aren't <laughs> Woolly. and if you want to say that I hate when you disagree <laughs> with me Chad. if you want to say that to Stephen McDonald yeah. and today, yeah. you're, you're <laughs> welcome to bring it on um, no I don't think so uh, I do think though Woolly, that they may not be going full on for the league and look look uh, when um, John Myler said that we were starting late in terms of their training program that sort of tells you a, a couple of things here it's not that, they're that it's not that a team will go in the liberty to lose matches but their focus may not be full on on every single match to go win the game it may be trying to fill a position or to reintegrate a player or something like that I think tri- three players you mentioned are interested and in, and are interesting and Michael is right um, you know Alan Cadigan is a serious threat and was on his way to being a serious serious scoring forward that was very difficult to mark particularly the way the Cork play uh, the way Cork play and the way they open up space but Stephen Stephen O'Donnell has proved er, has proved Steve McDonald has proved to be a really good man marker. Aidan Welsh, some he's you know he's a real threat in the air. So to mm. bring something different to the team, it's not that you're bringing in like with like Aidan Welsh is not like Daniel Carney here or something like that. You're bringing something different, which is not dissimilar to what Limerick did in terms of the subs that they're bringing on. So you could have went through all of the phases that Limerick play or Cork play in your preparation for the game and you've all angles covered and then somebody comes on who plays completely different uh, as Limerick did last year and you know you're sort of thrown out of your out of your stride then a little bit so Cork have some 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 things I do think though they do need to improve I, I think people are talking them up a little bit too much to be honest with you Willie. I genuinely don't think and they were very near it last year but would, would, would they have won the All-Ireland against Galway after that I'm not so sure I, I think they do need to improve whether these players will improve them or not or whether some young players coming through will improve which I'd prefer to see um, it will be interesting I think they need to fix their half-back line I said it a number of times last year defensively they're, they're okay but going front foot at speed to get into the open spaces to be able to drill the precise pa- ball into the legs of Adam, Adam Cadigan needs to improve a little bit for me to, to really you know stamp them out as being all Ireland potential winners. Yeah, mm. Coleman, yeah. Coleman, Tim O'Matney, and Aidan Walsh. There's a half back line and two new players. But anyways, listen, mm. we we have to move on. Who are you going for here, lads? This is a toss up, really. Um, I'm going Cork. Cork and mm. you, Cheddar. I go Kilkenny and Nolan Park. Okay, um, yeah, yeah, I probably <laughs> agree with that one. Kilkenny and Nolan Park. Wexford, uh, Limerick. This is in Wexford Park at two o'clock. Now this is the game on Sunday, so we'll talk plenty about this on Monday. So we'll just get predictions off you here, lads, because we're we're getting tight on time. Who do you fancy here? Limerick. Limerick are 8 to 13 Wexford are 13 to 8 outsiders at home now Limerick or Wexford beat them down there I think it was was it mm. last year at the, no two years the year before that um, obviously just, Limerick have improved since then I'm just struggling to see Wexford as contenders this year to be honest like, uh, with, with Davey struggling to come back and not like thinking about it why would he think about it if he had thought he had a serious team there you know I just I know the lads might be doing everything that, that's asked of them and they might be a great bunch of lads but I just don't think it's in the panel to win the All-Ireland I don't think they have the I don't see anyone new from last year coming in to say, oh, he's going to win the All-Ireland for us or be a great addition to the panel. Yeah, I'd but be like that. So you're going for Limerick. What are you going for there, uh, I, 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 I think I'd, I'd, I'd have to go with Limerick because generally speaking, the year after you come back from an, from an All-Ireland, your first game, you carry over your performance from You're the not All-Ireland. long back from Mexico now, I have to find out uh, before uh, you... I do not know, but... Uh, <laughs> Training uh, hard. Three though. weeks. <laughs> three weeks. Oh, should I probably train on yeah, holidays yeah, yeah, now? Yeah. I think even if you were there, um, I think you would perform on the day. You, 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 just, you just carry over that sort of energy and momentum for you. But I think that this league is massive for Davy 
um, you, you know, Davy cannot afford to lose the first three or four matches in in um, Wexford, and then the natives getting restless and that, and you know, sort of little little belief in the whole model as such. Uh, pardon the pun on on that word, uh, seeping a, a, away a little bit. So I think it's really really important for him. I think he has um, Lee Mogg McGovern back there, who I yeah. rate highly, mm-hmm. who is a very dangerous type of forward and that. But I just keep going back to Wexford that they really need to find no more in Dublin. They really need to find that efficient forward that is you know a very very high uh, um, execution of, of chances created ok so you have two limericks there and I'll go Wexford just to make sure somebody's right Galway Leash Pierce Stadium lads we can't spend long on this again we'll talk about all the teams throughout the championship Galway 1-50 to Leash 11-1 to and we'll all have to say that we go for Galway here and we'll talk about these teams a little bit no more no we won't <laughs> 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 Sorry now, bully, but um, I will never go against Leash regardless of what the uh, of, of what the odds are. <laughs> You're going to go for Leash uh, against Galway I away in Pierce Stadium. I don't care if it's in the Cheddar, <laughs> You're <laughs> letting the he- heart overrule the head. Woolly, I don't care if it's in the Iron Islands. We'll go up and we'll battle them <laughs> over there. Okay, let's see, that's why Cheddar did I so well go. for Leash. You see, he's <laughs> never going to lose a game. You have Waterford then against Offaly and Semple Stadium. So Waterford don't get their home game. So they're 1 to, two, one to 20. Offaly are 9 to 1. I think it's fair to say we'll all go Waterford here yeah. without any objections from Cheddar on this one. <laughs> I'm going Waterford. Uh, no, Waterford have, yeah. to okay. have to take that one. Okay, great stuff. Then we have uh, National League 2A. We've Antrim against Kerry. We've Westmead against London and we've Mayo against Mead. So there is still a bit of an interest in that. Joe Quaid is the Westmead manager. We'll talk to him over the course of the league. David Herity is in 2B with, with Kildare. Mm. So there's plenty of interest in those lower leagues. And of course, across the course of the league, we'll talk to managers and players um, from down the divisions as well. So that's it, lads. That's all we've time for. Who are we going to go to win the league? Who are we going to fancy before we leave? I'm Who going to Clare. You're going with Clare to win the league. Um, I'll, Cheddar. I'll, I'll go with Kenny. Um, I think Brian over the years has went ball headed for every single championship he's been in um, I think he will get his team settled and use the league to do that but still go for the wins where I think some other managers may not do that yeah ok that's fair enough I'll throw in Cork into the mix because <laughs> Cheddar told me that the, they're not just summer hurlers they can hurl in the league as well so <laughs> I'll <laughs> go for Cork alright that's all we've time for we're back on Monday um, with a review show as usual and we we'll talk to you then good luck